So hello again, it's Phil here, and uh, today I'm in Sidmouth with Anne Allen. And Sidmouth is a seaside resort town on Lyme Bay, and it was mentioned way back in the Doomsday Book. And um, much of the architecture, much of the architecture, dates from the Regency period, and Anne's going to tell us a little bit more about that and apparently the royal family had a summer home here and I think she's going to uh, elaborate on that a little bit. And of course um, Sidmouth is the gateway to the Jurassic um, Coast World Heritage Site so we are in a wonderful part of, uh, of Devon. Um, and of course like all original communities it was originally a fishing village. So I'm joined by Anne this morning who's going to um, uh, accompany me around some of the more interesting parts of Sidmouth and Anne I met some time ago and she is a, um, a storyteller and um, knows quite a lot and done quite a bit of research in her local area and is a resident of, um, of Sidmouth so welcome to you Anne. Thank you Phil. So where should we go first? Well here we are at the parish church it's a Norman foundation was rebuilt between 1450 and 1480 and then again extensively remodelled by the Victorians in the 1860s. So much remodelled that a local historian called Peter Orlando Hutchinson took a lot of the old chancel and rebuilt it in his house called the old chancel really? which is in Connaught Terrace. Okay. Uh, there's a lot of remodelling being done and recently we've had to redo some of the windows and roof because of course being such an old building it needs constant maintenance. It looks like the tower itself has been um, cleaned. Yes. It looks like it has. Cleaned, um, re-slated parts of it uh, more work done on lots of the windows and as I said it's, it's constant. It looks like it's in wonderful condition now certainly from the exterior anyway. Um, there's still some maintenance to be done but yeah. the building of this age that's something that's inevitable. You've got to expect haven't you yeah. Okay. Let's go this way. Okay down Church Street okay. to the marketplace. Bye bye. So this is the old part of Sidmouth, would you say? Or um, this is not the oldest part of Sidmouth. No. This is more um, beginning of the 20th century around here. But we're going towards the oldest part of Sidmouth, which is the marketplace, and down towards the seafront. Okay. We have a lovely morning for it. A gorgeous day here and uh, now that we're coming out of the dreaded lockdown people are getting their social lives back together again and starting to meet friends again it's lovely to see the market hall here yes this particular building was built um, 1929. 1929. There has been a market on this site since at least 1200. My goodness. Wow. It really does kind of, it's sort of the centre of the town, isn't it, in a way? It's like a focal point of the town? Completely. Yeah. Yeah, this square here is where a lot of events happen. Yeah. Particularly around Christmas time. Okay, okay. I love the trees and the, the floral decoration, and of course, um, we've got a rather sad looking yes, telephone box which uh, just down there uh, in the wall of, of Dukes yes. are 
the remains of St Peter's Chapel. Okay. Are we going down that way or should we go come back around? We'll, we'll come back that way. Okay. We'll go down this we'll way. Point that out when we come back. This is where the coaches used to come into the business. Okay. From London. Yeah. Wow. And what is now sea salt? Yes. On the corner was yes. the London Inn. Was it? Is that archway where the where the carriages would go through there no. or, or not? No, that's the way through to the old assembly rooms which were in fat face. Okay. Um, and in fact fat face became the first cinema. It was a cinema? Yes. Wow, my goodness, that's 1988 since, well, wow, that's fat face. 1913. Sometimes in places you've got to look up to get the real history, haven't you? Yes. Look above the street level. So, this is the main street. We're going to go right here. Go ahead, Anne. Busy morning, people are out enjoying the sunshine. It's half turn, so yes. the place is absolutely round. Yes. Coming out to uh, Sidmouth's famous promenade, which is such an attraction for people to come down here. Uh, and on a day like today. Yeah, we're just passing the Royal York, the first purpose built hotel in Sidmouth. Wow, must have a lot of bedrooms. It's quite large, isn't it, in a sense? And it's got wonderful. Views over the over the seafront as well. Oh, it's a wonderful building, isn't it? it is. That's really quite a. This is part of the Regency. Yes. Before the Regency, all of the buildings around here had their backs to the sea. They to did. Protect them, particularly after the storm of 1824. Okay. When a lot of the seafront was destroyed. Really, it's hard to believe that, isn't it? That must have been one hell of a storm. Absolutely. Before that, we just had a shingle protection here. Uh, yes. And in 1837, they rebuilt it with a stone sea wall. Well, I did a walk recently down at Slapton Sands, which is also a shingle beach. And again, uh, they had to rebuild the ridge there. Yeah, you can get a, a really good a good vantage point of the Regency style of these buildings from here, can't you? Absolutely. Royal York and Faulkner Hotel. Yeah, that was the first purpose-built one. Yeah. Yeah. And then you've got here fabulous sweeping view. Yes. Yesterday you could actually see all the way to Dorset, but there's a bit more mist could you really? today. Yeah, the coastline spectacular, isn't it? And the sandstone the, cliffs. They've put out the breakwater. The uh, gigs. Yes. So they are. Yeah. And from the other way, you can actually see right the way round past Peak Hill. Yes. Almost to Ladrum Bay. Ladrum Bay. Yeah. Oh, it's just a perfect day for it. Look at the people on the promenade enjoying the sunshine and uh, you often get buskers and uh, street musicians down here is that right Anne? Yep, yeah very much so. Lead on. Next to Salt Rock we have the beach house ah. and that was the first house built facing the sea. The first one? Yeah. 
it's really lovely, isn't it? With the balustrade and the balcony and the and the uh, the bow windows. Yeah, English Heritage paid for that to be um, completely renewed, but you can see there's been storms over the years and it needs needs doing again. Doing again. There's a blue plaque there, I notice. Yes. Do you want to go? Let's have a look, shall we? Yeah. So we have the uh, Sidvale, the Sidvale Association. Is that a local historical association Very then? Much so. Okay. Formerly Blossom House. Yeah, originally um, it was plain red brick, and then later became uh, completely rendered. This was the first residential building on the seafront, already in existence by 1776. So you can see that it was wrecked, as I mentioned earlier, by the Great Gale in November 1824. Yeah, it's it's um, it says there on the plaque that it's got a bit of a gothic kind of look to it. Is that is that sort of does in a way, doesn't it? Okay. Next door is Mocker, and that was the original reading rooms of the the seafront. Really? So this uh, restaurant or cafe was yes. reading rooms. Would that have been um, um, a, a Christian kind of? Uh, Fellowship, or what it do you mean, a or or a library? It was a private library. Private library. But um, ground floor we also had newspapers. If anyone could come in and read. Okay. A lot of the hotels along here had seawater baths. They had seawater baths. Wow, it that must have been quite an attraction. Well, that's what originally attracted. The Royals here. Was it? St Peter's Chapel, as I mentioned earlier, yes. there's a little bit of wall in Duke's. Okay, side. yes. You can't turn the corner so nice that they pedestrianise pedestrianise everything so walk around with okay here we have another blue plaque they exposed the original stone work yeah, so, the the so this was the original stonework of St Peter's cha Chapel um, it was medieval Built in 1322, probably the, for the monks visiting from Ottersham Priory, which, which since the Norman Conquest has been under the Abbey of Mont, Mont St Michael in Normandy. The chapel then was on the west bank of the wide Sid estuary. Sidmouth is named after the River Sid, um, Sid on, mouth on the Sid. Uh, after the break with France, Henry V presented it to Sion Abbey. Its religious use ceased after the dissolution at various times became a tavern and a school principally to teach lace making. The ancient building was demolished except for, the, for this wall in 1805. Isn't that amazing? You would walk past this and not notice it, wouldn't you? There's either a strange quirky story or a bit of history. It's so much 
We are so blessed in in this country, aren't we? We we you literally trip over history every 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 uh, walk you go on, every every step you take. It seems to me. Got a little trad band on the prom there, entertaining everybody. Kind of nice. So, how long have you lived in Sidmouth, Anne? Okay, and um, presumably you've come to like and love it, and uh, you've taken the trouble to delve into its history a little bit. And so, if anybody's looking for a new business, a new business, this is the place to come. Certainly got a good uh, good position. Certainly lots of hotels here, and it looks to me as though they're all doing pretty well. Uh, the hotel industry is not had an easy time of it since uh, we all got locked down. But again, they've done a lovely job with the frontage, repainted it, and they've got lovely. Uh, Tables and chairs, parasols. So what brought a Russian noble person over to Sydney, do you think? Possibly to visit um, with the royal connections over here because it was most popular with all sorts of royals. Gardens. Yes. Uh, the Glen Hotel. Okay. Which is where Queen Victoria stayed. Now, for those those of my subscribers who are not based in this country, I'm going to just show you a little bit, bit of a traditional English sport called croquet. And. Uh, Croquet involves um, a mallet, uh, a white ball, and you need to knock your opponent's balls uh, out of the way so that you can get your ball through these little hoops. And uh, that's my understanding of it. Uh, I might well put a reference to croquet in the description box below the video so if you're interested in finding out the origins of croquet um, you can read up about it there but uh, these people are really quite serious players by the look of it they've got these very very good mallets the lawn is just perfect and they're all in their traditional whites as well so uh, kind of uh, genteel English lawn sport but can be quite aggressive too so tell me more about this oh this we have another blue plaque absolutely this is Watfield Terrace it's just half of what was going to be the present but unfortunately the architect and his patron both died before it could be completed Oh, how unfortunate. Behind here is Sanditon. Yes. Which 
is named after an unfinished novel by Jane Austen. Oh! Who stayed here. Jane Austen stayed here. And along here, number seven and eight, where the Grand Duchess Helene came with all of her retinue, it was also the place where Elizabeth Barrett Browning stayed. And for a while it was my home too. Really? Really. How privileged to be living here for a while. Absolutely. Yes. Only six months, but it was lovely. Lovely. What a marvellous history it has. This terrace has an extremely royal connection. In fact, the Holy Sidmouth. As you say, it, it is slightly a crescent, isn't it? It's yes. got a slight curve to it. Yes. Um, but you can tell that it's unfinished. Yes. Now, is it just flats and apartments now, or is it...? Number one, apart from below, is all one. Okay. The rest are flats and apartments. Wow. Wow. Gorgeous. And in fact, at the moment, if anybody wants a new place, there are at least four for either rent or, or purchase. purchase. And what would you pay for one of these, do you think? Uh, depends on the size. There are one, two, three and four bedrooms. Right. And the average is around 450. 450,000? Yes. What, for a one bedroom? No, no, that's for a two bedroom. That's, two bedroom. that's the average. That's the average. Wow. Number one was sold recently for a million. My goodness. My goodness. Well, what a, what a position to be. If you're on, if you're on this second floor and that with one, the balcony. That one has recently been sold. Yes. And that one. Yeah. And that one. Really? You'd want to be on the second floor, wouldn't you, to have that balcony? Yeah, that's where I used to be. Did you? Wow. Amazing. And big my landlord has retired there now. Big rooms and high ceilings, I imagine. Oh, yeah. Yeah. The, um, the main room, 14 feet square. Wow, that's amazing. Now we've got a couple of, couple of elephants protecting the entrance here. Yes, a couple of blue plaques. More blue packs. I've never seen so many blue plaques in one place. Sidmouth has over 400 blue plaques. 400? Yes. 400 blue plaques? There are in... over 400 blue plaques in Sidmouth. That's phenomenal, isn't it? You could spend an entire week, week here, here. Just, just visiting the plaques. Absolutely. That's stunning, isn't it? That's number seven and eight, which is there. And that's where the Grand Duchess Helene That's was. This is where she stayed. It's got a quite nice, uh, nice entrance to it, isn't it? And this is the entrance that the staff would go in. The staff would go in through there. The staff entrance, number seven next door. Yeah. Again, has a beautiful entrance, and that—that that is where she stayed. Okay. Wow, that's amazing, isn't it? What a building! Do you know the times I've come down to Sidmouth, I've never really given this building a second look. It's interesting. Can we tend to focus on going down to to the promenade and Absolutely. seeing the sea? And if you look over here at the church here and look at the headland above there, isn't that quite beautiful, really? That yeah. headland. Uh, yeah, it's got yeah. such such appeal, isn't it? Absolutely. In that respect, we've got history, we've got the sea. There's the other croquet lawn. Here's the other croquet lawn. And down here, yeah. underneath, is the gentleman's club. There's a gentleman's club down here. Absolutely. Wow. So. Wow, this is really croquet central, isn't it? Very much so. <laughs> <laughs> and. Uh, become quite vicious actually croquet. I believe it can. I used to teach croquet. Um, oh you did? Yeah. Here am I speculating on what the hell, how the hell you play croquet and I'm talking to someone who used to teach it. <laughs> Not for 10 years but I used yeah. to teach it. You're a lady of many facets because we haven't even talked about your storytelling yet. Oh, no, no. But 
said behind here yeah. is Sanditon, okay. which used to be, um, before it was burnt down, the Thorpe Fields Hotel. Okay. And there is speculation yes. that it might have been arson. Arson, okay. But, uh, Claim on insurance. Absolutely, yeah. because the, the owners were in, apparently on the verge of bankruptcy. Bankruptcy, yeah. But that is speculation. Okay. But all of that area behind there is Sanditon, which is flats. Okay. But quite palatial and beautiful sea views. They look it, they look it, yeah. Okay, where next? We go through here and round the okay. path. It looks as though they're due for a match because they've got the deck out. A cricket match? Yes. Yes. Oh yes. Yep. It's a Saturday, so probably this afternoon. So, cricket on the green later today. We can't show you that at the moment because they're, they're this, not... It, this was originally the battery here. Of course. And you can see the top of the towers over there yes. was the entrance. Yes. So this might have been like a... Um, uh, a parade ground or uh, where they had their uh, weaponry or I would imagine so because guns and stuff next door is apparently where the barracks were the barracks were next door okay so if we follow the path around okay so we've got the cricket pavilion here which is uh, not just any cricket pavilion it's actually thatched <laughs> And uh, if you get exert yourself too much, you can always have a quick defibrillate. Okay, and another blue, blue plaque. plaque. You can't turn a corner into this without coming across a blue plaque. So you're so I'm finding out. Man. Um, I won't read what it says on the defibrillator but it says in 1935 this Fort Field cricket ground was purchased by public subscription for the playing of games hitherto, hitherto practiced and as laid down in the trust's deed and as an open space forever. Is anything forever? They obviously think so. <laughs> and then we have then we have the plaque again and Sidmouth was intermittently over many centuries at risk of seaborne attack. A fort was built in the field in 1628 and during the Napole Na Napoleonic Wars a company of volunteers was camped here. The, the fort had five cannons, there we go. After the Battle of Waterloo the cannons were removed and the fort became dilapidated. In 1823 a group of local gentlemen took a lease on the fort field to create a cricket pitch. A cricket house was erected in 1827 while the present pavilion dates from the 1880s. Some of the greats of international cricket have played on this ground and a gentleman's match in August 1875 uh, Devon versus Somerset saw Somerset County cricket ground formed. Cricket club formed. Wow, so it's, it was sort of the genesis of uh, one of the county cricket clubs. That's quite something, isn't it? It is. Yeah. Okay. So interesting, we've got some pebbles used to build this brick wall, giving it a kind of sense of where we are, the sea and the shore. We're actually walking along the side of a small rivulet. A small rivulet. Yes. Yes. Which is down, in down the there. Bottom. Like a little ravine. Yes. Yeah. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, it's rather lovely, isn't it? Quite natural and mature trees, mm -hmm. shrubs. Splash of colour. To the hotel. Is it? Back, would you believe? So there is. Sorry. 
So this is Glen's side, another historic blue plaque. It says the large detached villa was built here in 1905 but was gutted by fire two years later and reconstructed. The house was requisitioned by the RAF in World War II and the first dental hygienist training school in the UK was established here in May 1943. So there's a nice walk up through there. Yes. Yeah. There's also the bay, which is further east. Yes. Which is a love, another lovely walk. Uh, there's a load of really gorgeous walks. Some on the flat, like this one. Yes. Or you can go up and over. If you want Peak to. Hill. Yes. To the west, or Sulcombe Hill to the east. So. So. Depending on where Walkers, you're... welcome. Very much so. Everybody's welcome to Sydney. <laughs> Shall we continue on? Indeed. One more blue flag. Oh my goodness! You know, <laughs> I'm, I'm, I think my viewers might be getting a bit tired of yeah, me absolutely. reading off blue plaques by now. But considering how many you say are here. <laughs> Right. This is um, part of the moneyed part of Sydney. I was going to say, some of the properties here are quite something, aren't they? Very much so. Yeah. Big detached houses with double garages and Are we talking millionaires row then? Oh yes. We are. Sort of a modest little bungalow on the right here. <laughs> Another blue plaque over there. What's that about? You've probably forgotten what they all say. <laughs> <laughs> There's too many to remember. Now this house is interesting to look at because again it's got this lovely kind of stonework, hasn't it? Uh, in fact, the one next door does too, but that's actually lovely, isn't it? Really lovely frontage. The stonework's spectacular with the balconies. There is in fact an architect who lived not far from the theatre who had a hand in designing quite a lot of the places around here. Really? Another blue plaque over there. Yes. Morning to you. And this house here is just about almost identical to the one next door to it. So probably built by the same builder. Uh, looks like it's two flats, two apartments. A lot of them are blue Yeah. And here's the third one, much bigger the same kind of stonework but it is so attractive and of course uh, places like Sidmouth sort of uh, semi-tropical palms etc can survive quite well can't they yes
So I'm with, uh, still with Anne here, and now we're in uh, Sibbeth's uh, Connaught Gardens. It's the right name, isn't it? Uh, yes, absolutely. Anne. And it's uh, it's got a pitched on the hillside, really, isn't it? It's sort of above the, the beach. Quite a unique positioning in a way. And uh, it's quite a funny story actually because smugglers used to land here. Did they really? And it was also the site of the preventative station, as they were then called. Preventative station, like the Coast Guard? Yes. To try and catch the smugglers? Yes. <laughs> as they're hauling their rum up the side of the well, cliff, it's right? Literally, <laughs> the clock tower here. We used to have ramps, yes. which you could bring boats from the beach right the way up here. Oh my goodness. So we've got what looks like fortification of some sort. We've got a wonderful tea room here, which I've been many times, including with Anne. And uh, we do lovely coffee and snacks here. And what a lovely setting to have a tea room, isn't it? And. Uh, as usual when I'm filming, there's a plane overhead. <laughs> uh, but uh, it's a lovely place to come and just sit and chat and uh, read a book, uh, enjoy the, the sea air, look at the views. So therapeutic. Oh, it's another blue plaque. They're turning up with <laughs> boring regularity now, aren't they? They do. They do. Uh, looks like there's a bit of a bit of a get together out there at sea with a bunch of kayakers. Uh, it's kind of flat calm today, so um, kind of ideal for uh, getting out in your kayak or your board. Which way, Anne? That way. Um, okay. Earlier this week we had some more coastal erosion. Okay. And you can see yeah. the caves and tunnels yeah. over there. I see. Which is one of the places, in fact, where the smugglers used to hide their goods. Is it really? Perfect place to hide your goods. Wait till dark and then haul it up the beach or up the cliffs. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. Kind of a cat and mouse game between the Coast Guard and the smugglers. Yes. I bet the smugglers won most of the time. I wouldn't be surprised because there are quite a few public houses in Sidmouth. Yes. Where you can actually still see hidden places. And even recently, uh, in one of the coffee shops, I believe, they discovered a false wall. A false wall? Behind which one assumes goods were stored. At some point. At some point. Yes. Isn't that exciting, isn't it? So it's, things are still turning up even today. Indeed. How exciting would that be to, want, to be the one that discovered a false wall? You know? Absolutely. It's that kind of um, anticipation of wonder if there's any treasure still behind it, yeah. The rum, the rum wouldn't have been drinkable, would it? <laughs> Depends on how. And the spices, the spices were. wouldn't have, wouldn't have had much odour left, would they? Not much. <laughs> right, well, where to now? If we go okay. in the next door, okay, through the garden there. If you want a good view, we can go right to the end. Depends. It's on okay. Yes, but you want to cut through the garden, shall we? Yeah. yeah. Again. These were originally the gardens of a large house. Uh, they were named with his permission by the Duke of Connaught, and he came and opened them in the 1930s. So that's where the Connaught name comes from. Absolutely. Right. And they're opened in the 1930s. 
Yes. Which way? That way, this way? and then round. Okay. They're be beautifully kept, aren't they? But Mainly volunteers, I believe. Volunteers, yeah. But recently we have had problems with vandals. Oh dear. Coming and taking out a load of the bulbs and new shrubs that were planted. Oh dear. Oh dear. Uh, we do have a proportion of our society that are hell bent on destroying things. Yep. And what's that down there? Just a, like a little place to sit, is it? In the winter, perhaps, when it's raining? Um, I believe that there are some succulents in there. Oh, succulents, of course. Like a little uh, greenhouse then, eh? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Lovely look, view through to the coast and the sandstone cliffs there. Which is a feature of this part of uh, the coast in England. It's sandstone rather than granite. And Unfortunately, that also means it's very, very soft. Very soft. I've only lived here three years, and in that time we've lost 60 feet of coastline. 60 feet of coastline, yeah. Which is quite it's frightening. Continuous really. erosion. All, all the way along the Jurassic coast, isn't it? Right Absolutely. the way through Lyme and, and along. Because we have the sandstone, and then you go round to beer, yes. and it becomes chalk. Chalk. Which is equally soft and friable. Indeed. Indeed it is. And... Um, yeah, it's a constant uh, fight, and I'm afraid nature is going to win that battle. Very much despite so. Despite what we try and do. Yeah, but there are new coastal erosion defences yes. planned for Sidmouth. Are there? But with COVID, the money has disappeared. Yes, of course. So um, they've been trying new defences. Uh, for instance, we've had a glass panel up wasn't destroyed by the sea, it was destroyed by vandals. Really? So that's been put paid to. Oh dear. And dear. there has to be a rethink yeah. on defences. It's kind of crazy that we, you know, it costs a lot to try and protect our coastline with, uh, with you know, these kind of defences and then we're defeated by mindless vandalism. Absolutely right. And unfortunately we don't punish vandalism in the way we should do to deter them. They know they can get away with it, they know if they get caught they have very little uh, thrown against them. It's uh, We need a seed change in attitude. That was, my, that was my little rant about vandalism, sorry. Hang glider. I can't, oh yes there's a hang glider there. I don't know whether you would have picked that up on the film but there is a hang glider. Uh, catching the therms above the cliff there. We'll take a little walk down and just have a quick look at the view from the end, shall we? Okay. Yes, and we have cacti and succulents in here. Wonderful. Look at some of these mature cacti. They are fantastic, aren't they? Just amazing. And a little bit of a memorial here. Sympath branch of the Royal British Legion. Uh, it's a garden of remembrance for those who lost their lives in the Second World War and there's a a rifle and a Tommy's hard hat on top and roses. Isn't that absolutely gorgeous? And this lovely little promenade here which looks as though it's been built fairly recently in recent years which gives us a fantastic view of the beach below. There is a story about these rocky outcrops. Yep. Okay. These rocky outcrops, uh, smugglers claimed 
and there is still annually the crowning of a king of the Rock Islands at one of the local pubs. There is. The Swan. They kind of look man-made to me, but they're not, are they? Or I are they? I think the foundations aren't, but they've been extended and added and, to. And added to. Okay. Okay. And uh, down on the beach, this is all. This is all coastal erosion. This is all defence, sea defences, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Um, and some of these rocks. I mean, they've got. Look at the ones with the kind of lines along them, you know, almost like. Uh, Biblical tablets, aren't they? they are. Isn't that interesting? Yeah. It makes you wonder where they've come from. Well, those indeed. Are, those look like quarry marks. Yeah, they do look like quarry marks. That's where they've been, um, as you say, quarried, scraped. Uh, and in fact, this coast supplied a lot of the stone for Exeter Cathedral. Is that right? Amazing. Particularly beer quarry caves. Okay. And look at the shallows there with the seaweed and the little uh, the, the, the rocky outcrops which it's, is quite something it's brilliant for toddlers yes to do rock pools yeah it's quite safe is it reasonably yes. safe yeah yes. yeah well t today's a day when taking advantage of the lovely weather and it's quite a reasonable sized beach so there's room pretty well for everybody uh, to uh, chill out enjoy the sunshine and uh, it's such a beautiful town. It is. It's more thatched. More thatched houses, yes, yeah. So I'd like to thank Anne for uh, this wonderful, very, very personalised tour of Sidmouth this morning and her pointing out these. Uh, lovely little artifacts and stories that most people who come to Sidmouth probably don't know about, aren't aware of, and um, it is steeped in history, uh, borne out by the number of blue plaques that we've had a cursory look at. Uh, it's a lovely day and a fitting place to come and share some time with Anne, so I'd like to thank you today for being with me and in conversation with me, Anne. Thank you very much.